Yo, 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 it's your boy Jay Best, and welcome back to the Straight to the Point Podcast, episode 24. Um, as always, I just want to thank God for waking me up this morning and allowing me to talk about sports, which is something that I love to do, and without him, I would not be here right now. So, today's episode is going to be fairly short, okay? All I'm going to do is I want to recap this past weekend with the AFC and NFC Championship, and then uh, my next episode, I'm going to talk about, like, news around sports and uh, football, of course, mainly, but um, even some basketball things I'm going to talk about my next episode but for this episode i'm just going to talk about the last two games that happened this past weekend okay we're going to start off with the eagles and the 49ers okay of course in that game as y'all know i went with the 49ers okay i did think they had the better team i did think they'll perform better um even in philadelphia i thought they would get the win i thought that kyle shanahan would out coach nick seriani but my whole reasoning behind the 49ers winning just throw it out the window Throw it out the window. The whole reason for y'all saying that the Eagles would win, throw it out the window. Because this game did not go how anyone thought it would go. This game was ruined from the beginning. Okay, it really was. And, and, I mean, in my opinion, they should go ahead and just cancel the whole season. Because this game was ruined. Everything that could go wrong for the 49ers went wrong. Okay, let's just go ahead and address the elephant in the room. Brock Purdy got hurt, and, and when I say that, people are going to say, well, Brock Purdy, it's not like he's a top-five quarterback. It's not like the Chiefs losing Mahomes. It's not like the Bengals losing Joe Burrow. It's not like the um, Bills losing Josh Allen. Of course it's not. But Brock Purdy was on a hot streak. On a hot streak, he wasn't turning the ball over. He had won like seven straight games. Okay, the offense was averaging the most points in the league. Things was running so smoothly with Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy's not, I know he's not top 10, top 5, top 15 even. But in that offense, he ran that Kyle Shanahan offense better than any quarterback I've ever seen Kyle Shanahan have. Even Jimmy Garoppolo could not run that offense to that caliber that um, Brock Purdy ran it to. And I'm, I'm hoping that Trey Lance can do a little bit more than what Brock Purdy did this year because of his running ability, of course. But, um, Brock Purdy ran that offense as perfect as you can run it, okay? Um, and the, the main reason why he did that is because he basically just got the ball to the playmakers and let them make plays. That's all he did. He didn't sit back there and, 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 and juke people for 15 seconds like most quarterbacks. He didn't sit back there and scramble all day. He didn't, he didn't throw hard passes. He didn't try and fit passes between tight windows. No. He did what his coach drew up and having a great offensive coordinator, great offensive minded coach. He drew up plays that allowed his players to get five yards separation. We already talked about that in the past, but Brock Purdy getting hurt ruined this game because now not only do you not have and this is the third string quarterback, by the way, it's not like they lost the starting quarterback. They lost their third string. So who could be behind Brock Purdy? Well, it was Josh Johnson. Okay, Josh Johnson. This is the 13th team he's been with his whole career. Okay, so he's almost been with half the teams in the NFL. That should tell you something right there. In this game, when he got in, so Brock Purdy got hurt in the first quarter. Okay, I think it might have been the first drive, first or second drive. He got hurt, like nine something left in the first quarter. And I was like, okay, hopefully it's just a little, he's banged up a little bit. He can get back in the game. But then, obviously, he couldn't get back in the game. We saw the injury. We saw how bad um, Hassan Reddick hit his elbow on that strip sack because it was a fumble. And um, we saw he couldn't get back in the game. So, Josh Johnson gets in the game, and somebody texted me as soon as it happened. They said, okay, thank God that the Kyle Shanahan offense is so QB friendly. Okay, QB friendly meaning any quarterback can go in there and be successful because that's how good of an offense, that's how good of a scheme it is. The quarterback doesn't have to be that great. And we've seen it, okay? Kyle Shanahan with Jimmy Garoppolo, the offense successful. Kyle Shanahan and Brock Purdy, the offense successful. Neither quarterback are great out of this world talents, but the offense has been successful because of the play calling, and not just that, but because of the skilled players around the quarterback. Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, George Kittle. Okay, Brandon Ayu, a great O-line. So, Josh Johnson gets in there. And he literally wet the bed. Like, he couldn't do any worse than what he did. He gets in there. He gets three delay games. Okay. He lost a fumble that hit him right in the hands. Okay. This was going into half. I think it was 14 to 7. 
Okay, so going into halftime, you down by, I think Kyle Shanahan was trying to get in field goal range, just so it can be maybe 10 to 14 going into halftime. That's perfect. You're, you're right there, right where you want to be in Philadelphia. But then the ball hits him right in the hands. He fumbles, couldn't even recover it. So now they get the ball back, and they score real quick because they had good field, uh, field position. And now it's 21-7 going into halftime. I said, okay, the game's over because the 49ers did not have a quarterback. But three delayed games, a lost fumble, and then he got sacked twice. Okay, so Josh Johnson literally messed this game up. Okay, Brock Purdy getting hurt, just tore this game to pieces. And now, just now, not just that, but you even saw Nick Bosa and Fred Warner getting hurt throughout the game. When Fred Warner got hurt like the second play of the game, and then but he did go back in the game, of course. But then Nick Bosa was battling injury throughout the whole entire game. So this game, man, was just ruined from start to finish. And and there's nobody I felt more sorry for in the history of football like even being a Steelers fan I cannot remember a day where I felt so bad for Mike Tomlin I felt so sorry for Kyle Shanahan because there was nothing he could do guys it was down 21 in the second half and they could not throw the ball because Brock Purdy eventually came back in because if y'all saw Josh Johnson got a concussion so um, Brock Purdy had to come back in and he saw on the sideline he was throwing like little short passes all he could do was throw a short pass he only threw the ball like one time and it was a screen pass to Christian McCaffrey so they literally could not throw the ball. So, I mean, the team was just it was just, it was over. There was nothing Kyle Shanahan could do. Like I said, down twenty one, still running the ball because they could not throw the ball downfield. So this game, everything that could go wrong went wrong. And then um, not and then people say, okay, well this defense is so good. Why they score um, so many points? Was it thirty one points on them? Why they score thirty one points on them? Well, let me tell you something. When your defense is out there for so long. And your offense can't get anything going. And the defense is out there. Just And the Eagles, what do they like to do? Like to run the ball. So if I run the ball all day on you, I'm just wearing you out. And this is one of the, be- the league's best rushing offenses. When I'm out there for so long and I'm running the ball, just wearing you down, what do you expect to happen? And when the offense is not giving you any kind of spark, any kind of juice, anything, what do you expect to happen? A defense cannot play perfect for four quarters, okay? We've seen the 49ers do it over the year against a bunch of uh, mid to average teams, but the Eagles is a great team. You can't do that against a great team. You can't be one-dimensional against one of the league's best teams. Um, so the defense also, they, they, killed this, they killed this game because it is the only thing I'm going to blame on defense. Defense, they couldn't do nothing. The offense couldn't score. So I cannot blame this game on the defense, but the defense did – allow seven first downs off penalties. I'm talking about late hits, um, roughing the punter. I'm talking about stupid penalties that they could have that they could have limited to at least give themselves a chance at this game. And they allowed seven first downs off penalties, which is the most since the Raiders in two thousand and two. Okay, so all around this game was just ruined from start to finish. Now, that's not to discredit um, the Eagles, okay? The Eagles are a great team, no doubt. I think both teams were great going into this game. That's why I said this would be the game of the week because it's two of the best teams in the NFL. So it's not to take anything away from the Eagles. It's just that I can't give a fair assessment. I cannot grade the Eagles off of that game because they had the advantage from start to finish. You played a team with no quarterback, literally no quarterback. Like, at one point, Christian McCaffrey was a quarterback. That's how – that's how – bad thing that's how bad the situation was for the 49ers so for the eagles can i really sit there and 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 give you the benefit of the doubt i think i have to right because we can't redo the game so you did win the game and you did win it in a dominant fashion but i just think that the eagles if they would have played the 49ers at full strength i don't think the eagles would be here but if they were here it would be like a field goal it wouldn't have been a blowout so nobody came into this game thinking okay the eagles gonna blow the 49ers no, everybody thought it'd be a nice, tight game, a nice, aggressive game, but things got totally flipped. And um, just to bring it up, that first drive, that throw that Jalen Hurts made to uh, Devontae Smith on the fourth and three, I think it was fourth and three, they threw the ball down the field. Um, the, it was an incomplete pass. It ended up being an incomplete pass after we looked at the replay, but in, in games in real life time, Devontae Adams um, tried to catch, I mean, Devontae Smith, I'm sorry, Devontae Smith tried to catch the ball. Um, he dropped it. He knew he dropped it, so he did some little um, signal and let the offense know, let's go. Let's get going. Let's get back on the ball. Let's snap the ball so they can't challenge it. Kyle Shanahan did not get the best view to see if he dropped it or not. And it's that early. It was the first drive of the game, so why would I throw a challenge flag on something that I'm not sure about and then end up losing a timeout 
for the whole first half in a huge game. This is an important game with timeouts. I'm assuming at one point it's going to be very important, right? Because you think this game will be tight to the wire to the end. So Kyle Shanahan made a good decision by not going for it. And I don't blame – and I mean, I'm um, challenging that um, catch. I don't blame him for not doing it. People are going to bash his head in because they're saying that's what led to – that first drive is what led to the, the dominance of this game when it did it. Brock Purdy getting hurt is what led to the dominance of this game. But the Eagles played played good. I, I mean, I, I got to give it to them. They played good um, for the most part, uh, especially whenever – when a team is bleeding like that. Right, and you and you have sharks in the water, right? Whenever they see something, they see blood, they attack. Right, when they see something bleeding, they attack. Well, the Eagles was a shark, and they saw the 49ers bleed into death, and they went ahead and they attacked it. They didn't give them a chance. You know how they say in sports um, terminology, they say like in um, basketball or football, whenever you're up by a lot, keep keep your foot on their necks, keep your foot on their necks, do not let up in the game. That's what the Eagles did. The Eagles put their foot on the on the 49ers' neck. And they did not let them have a chance at coming back into this game. So they did what they were supposed to do in the situation that presented itself with the 49ers being hurt, especially at the quarterback position um, and not having a quarterback. So the Eagles are in the Super Bowl and not the 49ers, who was my preseason prediction to make it to the Super Bowl. So I was that close, y'all. I was that close to getting something right. All right. So next, the uh, next game was the Chiefs. And the Bengals and the Chiefs did beat the Bengals twenty three to twenty, like I said they would. So I did get one game where right? I went one and one, but this game I want to talk about this game so bad because I told y'all going into this game the hype was just too much. How is so people know Aaron Rodgers is the best in my opinion. He's still the best quarterback in the league, but Mahomes is arguably the best quarterback in the league. I'll give you that argument. Like when people say that, I don't get mad. But going into this game, all we heard about was Joe Burrow. That's literally all we heard about. All I heard was Joe Burr, Joe Shiesty, Joe Cool. They playing in Burrowhead, not Arrowhead, but Burrowhead. How is the best quarterback in the league, arguably the best quarterback in the league, not the most talked about quarterback going into an AFC championship? Like, I just don't. I don't get it. So, so the the stats in this game were um, the Mahomes went twenty nine to forty three for three hundred twenty six yards and two touchdowns. Had a QBR of one hundred and thirteen. Y'all remember that one hundred and thirteen. Joe Burrow went twenty six to forty one, two hundred seventy yards, one touchdown, two ints. Had a QBR of seventy six. So on a grade of, of so on a scale of zero to one hundred, he was a seventy six, and Mahomes was one hundred and thirteen. Okay. When I when and, and I read the stats for this game. I didn't read the stats for last game because last game was just ruined from the from the beginning. But this game I did read the stats and I, and normally when I read stats I read the quarterback, running back, and the receiver, like the leading rusher and the leading receiver for each team. But this game was about two quarterbacks. That's what it was all about. It was about who made the most mistakes and versus who played better. And Joe Burrow made the most mistakes, and Mahomes played better. Joe Burrow threw two interceptions, two costly interceptions. When you throw two interceptions and you lose by a field goal, I can automatically point the blame at you because you took away two possessions from your team where you could have scored two field goals or you could have scored one field goal or you could have scored a touchdown. So those two possessions that he threw, those interceptions, literally took points off the board and i believe it gave points to the chiefs in uh some way shape form or fashion i didn't get the stat for that for points off turnovers but when you turn the ball over twice in a game that is that is that ends 23 or 20 obviously you are the blame for the loss so i gotta blame joe burrow who was so talked about going into this game he came into his game and he snuck up the joint in my opinion i don't think he had a game where we could say okay two great quarterbacks played each other no one great quarterback played and one overrated, overhyped quarterback played. When I say overrated or overhyped, there's levels to this, okay? There's levels. And what y'all did coming into this game was y'all put Joe Burrow and Mahomes on the same level. And they're not. Okay, first of all, Joe Burrow has the best weapons in the game. Like T. Higgins, um, Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd, Joe Mixon, Hayden Hurst, he has the best weapons in the game. It's O-line and shaky, I got it, but he has the best weapons in the game. All Mahomes has is Travis Kelsey and a bunch of nobodies that he uses to win ball games. So we can look at it from that perspective and say, okay, Joe Burrow 
has an easier task when it comes to making plays. So, yeah, I just throw it to Jamar Chase. I could throw it up to T. Higgins. And Tyler Boyd is going to be open because you're double teaming T. Higgins and Jamar Chase. Joe Burrow has the best weapons in the game. Okay. So, there's just there's just levels to this, man. And y'all put Joe Burrow and Mahomes on the same level, which I don't agree with. I think it's Aaron Rodgers and Mahomes. Then I think it's like the, the Josh Allens, the um, Justin Herberts, the Jalen Hurts, and maybe the Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow is the second, like, tier two. He's not tier one. Tier one is just two quarterbacks by themselves. It's over with. There's no debate. Okay, there's nobody better than those two quarterbacks. So Joe Burrow is on tier two. What y'all did was y'all elevated Joe Burrow for some reason up to tier one with um, Mahomes. And I just don't, I don't think you should do that. Basically, you're poking the bear. Okay, you poke the bear and look at what it got y'all. Joe Burrow is at the house smoking a cigar on the couch, not going to the Super Bowl, smoking a cigar on the couch. I think the the spotlight of this game has to go to Chris Jones. Okay, Chris Jones had two sacks. Okay, the Chiefs had five sacks in total. I think this old line. This is why this is why I said the Bills gonna win last week because I said the Bills. The Bills should have dominated that game because the Bengals old line they was missing three out of five old linemen. So I thought that what happened in Arrowhead, what happened in Buffalo, I thought Buffalo would just out-dominate that old line and get five sacks and win a game like that. But the Chiefs did it. The Chief Chris Jones had two sacks. The Chiefs did it with five sacks. And that's what ultimately led to this game. Remember the last drive when Joe Burrow had the ball. He had the ball 20-20. to 20. He had a chance to go and win the game. He had a chance. But Chris Jones came and ended it with the sack on that last drive. And then Mahomes got the ball, drove down the field, and got the field goal. Um, people like to point at the the penalties in this game for some reason. They like to say the Bengals had nine penalties. The Chiefs had four penalties. The rest was on the Chiefs' side. Every penalty that the referee threw, there was valid. Uh, there's a valid reasoning behind it. Okay, people like to talk about the, the play that didn't count, the play where um where um, Mahomes had the ball on third down. He didn't get it, but then they replayed the down. Well, before that play, a referee in the secondary was trying to call the play dead. But you're an arrowhead. It's so loud. Nobody heard the whistle. So you're trying to call the play dead, but the play went anyway. So they let the play go. And then they came back and said, okay, we tried to stop the play before the play started. But this had, but but we couldn't, they couldn't hear the whistle, so they replayed the down. He was saying, he's just giving out extra downs. No, there's reasoning behind it. That intentional grounding by Joe Burrow. He threw the ball to the feet of the O-lineman, and the ball didn't get past the O-line. So I don't want to hear um, it wasn't intentional grinding because the running back was standing right there. No, he threw it to the ground behind the line of scrimmage, behind the old lineman's feet. Okay, so the, the, the flags, the excuses, I don't want to hear. What happened was going into this game, y'all overhyped the wrong QB, okay? And like I said, I said overhyped because Joe Burrow is just not at that level yet. He's not at that top level yet that he should, that people put him at going into this game. And I think in this game, he showed y'all that he's just not there yet. Yes, he has a Super Bowl appearance in his first two years. I got it. Yes, he is the he's the most talked about quarterback when it comes to nicknames. I got it. But he's just not on Mahomes' level. And Mahomes showed that he's better than him, even with a sprained ankle. Okay, so this game, y'all, the Bengals talked too much trash, and they came back and kicked him in the you-know-what. All right. But, um... That's how that game ended. Um, once again, the Chiefs did beat the Bengals 23-20, to and then the Eagles beat the 49ers 31-7, to okay? That is it for today's episode. Okay, like I said, my next episode, I'm going to talk about news around sports, around football and basketball, of course. Those are my main two sports that I talk about. Um, but And I will have a special guest on that show. I know I said I wouldn't do it to, um, ep- to um, 100 subscribers. I said give me 100 subscribers, and I will do um, a special guest, but I might have a special guest on my next episode. And next episode will just be about news around sports because, as y'all know, Super Bowl is not until next weekend. Okay, so I got two episodes that kind of just talk about things going around in sports. All right, but that is it for today. It's your boy, Jay Best, and I'm out. <laughs>